It's always the days where I have a lot of stuff I need to get done that uh, studios like Marvel are like, let's drop a new trailer. Let's mess up her schedule. That's the only reason that was released today. I hope you know that. They just want to mess with me. They didn't do this for any other reason than that. I'm joking, of course. But we have a new trailer for Wakanda Forever. And uh, yeah, I'm still excited for this movie. Let's take a look at what we've got, shall we? Still starting with a somber mood. Makes sense. Only the most broken people. Oh, it makes sense for Namor to say that, I suppose. Like, I don't agree at all, but it sounds like him. His people do not call him General or King. They call him Kukul Khan, the Feather Serpent God. Huh. Oh, <laughs> We'll risk eternal war. They're using the... Wings on the feet, I'm so happy. For the surface world. God, you look so good. What you whisper. They have lost their protector. Ooh. There we go. Had to happen eventually. So, okay. Definitely a few immediate thoughts. Is there a button? Nope, no real button on the trailer. Okay, cool. So, that does appear from the stylization of the suit to be a, uh, a woman in that suit. And... The fact that I can tell that on sight, partially because they reshaped it to emphasize the bust, that does annoy me slightly. Like, I get like it's going to have a slightly different silhouette because none of the female characters in this uh, movie series are going to have the same silhouette as Chadwick Boseman did. I get that. But like, the, did you... Uh, what I need to see how it looks in some other shots. Maybe it's not as bad as as my first impression was, but I I don't like the uh, the little touch. And like, granted, they're smaller touches, but compared to what can happen, but they are kind of like, hey, chest, boobs. Why? I did get a real kick out of the fact that Namor is using. <laughs> they kept the wings on his feet. Eddie is flying with them. I, uh, this, Marvel has had its ups and downs, and I've been kind of critical of a lot of their output uh, in the last oh, couple years, honestly, but I do love that they are not afraid of the absurdity of their own source material. I will continue to praise them for that, even if maybe it doesn't always work, and hopefully this will work. I will say, I'm not sure laughter was was the reaction I was supposed to have, but like that was joyous laughter on my part. That made me really happy to see. Now the thing is, I don't, I haven't followed a lot of um, any possible beef that Atlantis has had with Wakanda in the comics. I'm sure it's there. I'm pretty sure that's been a thing. I don't know what the root of that is. Because I, if I'm being honest, I don't know a ton about Namor. I do know, like, he has no love of surface dwellers. I know that. So, like, don't think of him as, as an equivalent to Aquaman in terms of characterization. Because he's not. But given what his beef with humanity usually is, Wakanda would be an odd nation to target. Uh, but again, maybe there's something else going on that is 
from the comics that I just don't know, because I only know so much about Namor in the first place. But I will be curious if in a, if like in a final trailer, uh, we get a cleaner sense of why there is a conflict here. Um, I will also be curious to see whether or not they reveal in trailers or promotional material who is actually in the suit. Because I would say there are four viable candidates, three being, you know, one being a bit unlikely. But uh, we've got Shuri, who narratively would make the most sense. Um, some potential issues with Letitia Wright, let's just not deal with that today. I don't, I don't have the spoons for it. But narratively, that would make the most sense. Um, Okoye is another well-established character. Um, they'd have to do some serious leaping to uh, justify why she'd take that mantle, given what she feels her position is and should be. Uh, there is Nokia, um, Lupita Nyong'o's character, which... Uh, would be a stretch unless they establish that between movies and prior to uh, T'Challa's death, however it is they're covering that, uh, that she and he were married, which would make her uh, a queen of sorts. Now, there's still going to be open questions about the the succession with how we saw it work before uh, in the first Black Panther, but that's an option. Outside chance, uh, the queen... <laughs> because I kind of love to see Angela Bassett kick a lot of butt. I think that's a stretch. Uh, simply because uh, due to her age, Marvel can't count on getting as many films out of her in a lead role like this. Um, so I think that's that's a logistical thing. I think narratively that could absolutely work. But those are kind of your four premier uh, options, assuming it's not a completely new character, which I think everyone would be disappointed by. Like, I know Riri Williams gets introduced into this, but I'm not even considering her as an option. So where I was going with that is I wouldn't be shocked if they don't reveal in trailers or marketing materials who it actually is who's in the Black Panther suit. I actually kind of hope they don't. Because that would be very cool. That would be very cool to go into the theater's and have that be part of the experience, wondering who is it that's going to take up this mantle? I don't know if they'll have the restraint for that, and I don't know if they could keep it from leaking. Um, marketing people having enough restraint to not spill something something like that, uh, it's it's that's uncommon, but it would be really tough to keep on top of it, even if they tried to stop it from leaking somehow. But I, in my ideal world, that would be the way that they would do it. Uh, as far as the rest of it goes, there's still uh, a lot of emphasis, especially on the front end of the trailer, on the loss of T'Challa and, by association, the loss of Chadwick Boseman. I know that some opinions have shifted on, on what was the best way forward. I think, um, at, again, this was just my general read of the room. I think when... Chadwick Boseman first passed away. I think most people um, were of the opinion that it was best to not recast the part. Um, and I was kind of in that camp at the time. I'm, I still kind of end up there, but not, not with as much confidence. Because I've seen some very compelling arguments for why it actually would have been better to recast. Unfortunately, I don't think it was ever realistic for them to do unless they pushed the shooting of the movie back by a little bit more time because... <sighs> so here's the thing. If they had recast T'Challa, it would have indicated both idiocy and foresight. Foresight insofar as by the time the movie comes out, the initial piercing blow of the loss of Chadwick Boseman will not be gone, but it will have faded enough that maybe it doesn't seem as pressing to not recast him. Uh, however, if they had done that, even though like at this point it is a few years later and we are seeing a shift in the conversation, um, they would have had to announce that casting change 
a couple of years ago when the wound was still fresh, and that would have soured people on this immediately right from the production standpoint. So really, if they were ever going to recast, they would have had to, I think, also delay the shooting of the movie by at least a year, if not two, so that even the announcement of the recasting wouldn't sour the whole thing for being too close to his passing. But since they either weren't willing or weren't able, possibly due to financial realities, who knows, um, to push the movie back as a whole, this was, from a business standpoint, probably the best way forward. I'm still fond of it as a, as a narrative possibility. And looking into how, especially a woman taking up the mantle, could be disruptive internally to Wakanda and um, to see how that affects things and how that shakes out. I think that could be really interesting. I think there's a lot of narrative potential because we have to keep in mind, it's, you know, they didn't choose to kill off T'Challa. This was not something anybody wanted. Life happened. Um... I, I still think there's a lot of narrative possibilities, but as I said, I've seen some very compelling arguments in the last oh, three or four months towards the option of recasting. And so I think certainly at this point, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have issue if that's what they'd opted to do, but they didn't. So this is the movie we have. Um, but as I said, the, the, the front end of being a lot more of an emphasis on sort of the, the funereal nature of the movie that it kind of inherits by circumstance is probably a good way to continue to present this. Like, we know that we don't have this anymore. We're acknowledging that loss, and then we start to see more of what the story might actually be. Um, we're still not getting a ton of narrative clarity. Uh, we are getting uh, images of a lot more locations. There were a number, I was surprised at how much things that like look to be set neither at Wakanda or Atlantis, like set in a, like a, like there was a police car and like a normal street and, um, T'Challa's mother was speaking at what looked like the UN. And I, I guess given the title and, um, if Atlantis is going after Wakanda, I kind of expected the whole thing or the vast majority of it to be set at Wakanda. And maybe it still will be. I mean, if you actually break down the narrative, most of, uh, Black Panther is set in Wakanda or in Wakanda adjacent areas. I um, mean, it's just kind of in the second act where it ventures out from that. So uh, we might have a similar structure here, who knows? But it, it, it did strike me like, I, I, I don't know, I just hadn't expected to see like a police car. Uh, I don't know, something about <laughs> something in my brain that, that felt weird. Not in a, oh, that's wrong, it shouldn't be their way, just in a, oh, it hadn't occurred to me that we'd have stuff set outside of, uh, of Wakanda or Atlantis. Um, we're still only getting general looks at Atlantis, at the Atlanteans, uh, at Namor. We get the best, uh, look at him in specific. And, uh, it's looking pretty good. I mean, the, it suffers a little because Aquaman beat it to the theater by a couple of years. So however they choose to present this is going to be compared fairly or not to Aquaman and how Aquaman chose to depict um, Atlantis and a lost civilization of sea-dwelling people. Um, like I said, Namor as a character and in terms of his characterization is different enough that that should be much less of an issue. But I think any depiction of Atlantis as a location is certainly going to beg comparisons. Um, so I'll be curious to see how that goes. This looks a bit more, a bit darker, a bit less vibrant, which... On the one hand, makes sense given that these are the villains, whereas Atlantis, you know, it had to look like a place that you would want uh, Arthur to rule in Aquaman, whereas here it can be presented a bit darker, for lack of a better way to put it. Um, but uh, we'll see. That's kind of where I'm at in a lot of ways. We'll, we will see, but most of what I'm seeing so far feels like it is done with confidence and looks promising, and I'm not seeing a ton of what I consider to be concern points or red flags about this so far. Um, so I'm still excited for this. Um, my excitement, if it's been tempered a bit at all, it's only because I feel like I've been let down by a lot of Marvel stuff I, stuff I was really looking forward to. Like I was really looking forward to She-Hulk, and I've only really liked 
well, one episode, to be honest, and most of it has just been okay. I was really looking forward to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and I had mixed feelings coming out, uh, coming out of it, and I felt worse about it as time has passed. So I'm... Marvel... While I still have enough faith in Marvel to want to see these things, I don't have, at this particular moment, as much confidence in my own enjoyment of it. So that's that's more to do with where I'm at with Marvel right now overall versus uh, my thoughts on Black Panther in particular. I kind of went off on a number of topics <laughs> on this one. I ended up using the trailer more as a leaping off point. But what are your thoughts on this? On the trailer? On anything that I've said? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Uh, Patreon's what pays the bills and enables me to do this as my living. Any amount you can assist me with there is incredibly helpful. Uh, even if you can't, like, share, subscribe are helpful to me as well. Don't worry too much about it, though. We take a relaxed attitude around here so you can come on back next time you need a break. Time to give my thanks to my highest supporting patrons. That would include Robin Moore, Zubin Lutfula, Tarak, the thing that goes doink in the anime, Oliver B., Melinda Walters, Emu Delki, Theotha Boyd, Becky Sparks, Pranabi Likes the Poodle, Zach, Idolin, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Adam RDL Taylor, Shane Ross, Shaley Gourlay, Brendan LaRose, and TT. <laughs> If you want your name said while these guys try and distract me, consider looking at the rewards on my Patreon. <laughs>